Welcome to day eight. First week is done and dusted. Um, I finished the edits on that, uploaded that vlog the other day, and um, I can't believe it's been a week. You know, it's it's pretty crazy to think that I've gone from thinking about this two weeks ago, building a golf program for myself, and now I'm already a week into it. So. I'm starting to see some benefits, I'm starting to see some really cool results already, but I'm trying not to get ahead of myself because I know that the hardest part about this is still ahead of me. Now, there's an interesting thing that I kind of want to test out and I want to figure out why this isn't used more widely in how golf is taught. And that is practicing under fatigue. I don't think that light's there, but practicing under fatigue is something I used to do for basketball and what that used to build was like mental fortitude to execute or do something while you were fatigued so i want to really test that out and see how that actually works out when you're trying to swing a golf club because when you think about playing golf and you think about how much we walk for example not all of us have the liberty to get carts or ride in buggies and things like that so most of us will walk if that's the case, it might be 6,000, 7,000 yards. So by the time you get to the back end or the back nine, you're normally fatigued. Your mind's a little clouded. So I want to try to practice under a little bit of the simulation that I'm fatigued. So I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to do that, get some stretches in. I'm going to jump straight onto the spawnia and get right to work. So let's go. Almost one kilometer in. Um, it's just gotta keep working. It's a beautiful day though, look at this. Today was kind of the first day where I was like, motivationally just almost was like, I need, I need a day off. But I, I realized that the challenge that I've set for myself is to be consistent and build discipline and to show up for you guys because the comments that I'm getting, the encouragement that I'm getting, to be honest with you, is probably why I'm here today. So thank you again for all the little uh, words of encouragement. So you guys have been following along. This is that little wrist hinge tool that I use, or training aid that I use, sorry. Um, so I'll get this on the club. And then I'm gonna need a second training aid today. So I'm building, on, building off what the base that I set last week for myself. So um, number one, wrist set, wrist position. Number two is connected or being connected in your golf swing. And the way we're gonna do that today is a very simple way. Um, I'm gonna grab something like a towel or a club head. So the way I'm gonna do this is, I've just got a club head cover. So this is a driver cover here. And you may or may not have seen this drill before. So we're still gonna need some balls for this. And this is a drill that I love to do because it gives me this feeling of being, being connected, but it also forces my body to do a lot more than it usually would. And I'll demonstrate that to you in a second. So what we're gonna do here is got my wrist hinge, wrist training aid right here. I'm gonna start off with a couple of warm up swings. 
and just sort of get that feeling back something that is now quite familiar to me after having done this for about the last week or so consistently every day for you know 10 15 20 30 minutes a day you start to build a, a common feeling and a, a, a sense of familiarity with what you're trying to do that's really good for consistency for me so um, I'm just going to warm up by hitting some punch shots here. <laughs> so not all going to be pretty either. So the interesting thing is I'm feeling very fatigued right now after going for that run. So it's going to be a bit of a test. But I think it's a great way to train because if you don't practice in harder conditions than what you play in, then how can you expect to perform better in those tougher conditions? You're probably not going to. And it's also mentally good for your golf game, I think. And you don't have to go for a run. I think sometimes I might go for a bike ride, might be a long walk, whatever you're capable of doing, I think, to just fatigue yourself a little, and then you try this. Can't wait, big basketball game tomorrow, the Nuggets and Bucks. Playing at Denver, it's gonna be huge. Happy for the Detroit Pistons beating OKC though. Love seeing that. Welcome to anyone that is new to the channel as well. Um, a few names that come to mind are Doug Scott, and a few names that come to mind are Doug and Tony. Um, who else we got? A few others. Austin, welcome to the channel. I saw you guys commenting and um, telling me that you enjoyed the videos and or sharing some things with me. And it's nice to meet some of you. So I hope you're watching this and I hope that there's value in it for you. I've been watching a lot of Garrett, sorry, Grant Horvath's swing. Something I like that he does is move is he kind of gets to here and instead of turning his body, he sort of gets to here and he really leans into the back of the ball almost. And he's got this beautiful, beautiful swing. Um, so there is a little bit of that that I'm picturing as I'm trying to warm up here because I think if you've got a model of what you're trying to do, it makes it a lot easier to execute or do something just to model it on, you know, like. All right, nice and warmed up. I'm gonna flip the hat forward. get some work done here real quick grip trainer on club head cover that's going to go under your rear armpit okay so this is all about staying connected and the reason i do this is because for a multitude of different things i have a problem where when i get to the top of my swing i can sort of chicken wing a little bit and this is, comes from a if you've played softball baseball uh, cricket, anything like that, this is a common position to be in. It's not a bad thing for golf, but I think for me personally, consistency is tough from that spot to square up and be consistent at the ball. So what I would prefer to do, oh, and, and the second thing is that I have, because of this left shoulder being a little bit, having some mobility stuff, 
I don't have a great habit of always having a good turn into the back of that ball and keeping that elbow kind of tucked in as close as possible to my body and being compact. I sometimes tend to look like this. And now from that position, that's all I can do, especially if I try to hit the ball hard and I'm coming over the top and I'm obviously gonna cause slices and more spin on the ball, which is something that I'm trying to reduce. So this is just gonna put my club or add to the thing that I'm doing with the club head. And it's gonna put me on plane, on target every single time. Now, when I get to the top of a bat swing, all I'm thinking about here is feeling connected through here as close as possible, keeping a tight-ish squeeze on that club head. I just don't want it falling out at the top of my backswing. Once I've then made contact with the ball and I follow through, towards the end of my drill, I'll, it's okay if the club head drops out, but I'll try to keep it in there and just be completely, you know, just keep repeating myself. So very simply, all I'm doing with this club head, turn, and I'm just, hitting those little Tommy Fleetwoods that I love hitting. I'm just focused on staying connected here. What it's forcing me to do is really turn into this back leg and turn around it as well because my body knows that I can't let go of this club head. It's a sweet strike. This is actually very cool. The feeling that it's giving me is, is so much better than what, what I thought it would be. You notice I'm not really following right through. I'm trying to finish a little taller. So having a position at impact that's my head down, looking at the ball until the clubs pass me and then I'm kind of looking up and finishing a lot taller. These are thoughts that I'm going through. And this is stuff that, you know, it could be right, could be wrong, depending on who's talking, but it works for me. And so it's, about just working on something that's a strength of yours. That feels really solid. I feel very connected. Wow. I'm gonna actually put you over here and give you a sense of a kind of side view of what this looks like. And you're not gonna see much of the actual ball. So give you a really good idea of what I'm trying to achieve when I, and what I'm talking about, about staying connected. I mean, a lot of you will understand this. You guys are good, good golfers, most of you out there. But if you're new and don't really know what I'm talking about, this might give you an idea. I'm not thinking too much here. I'm letting the, the two aids that I've got force my body to react. And you will, you know, if you've ever played golf, you're a human being, your brain is smart enough to react to some of these aids.
the trap is to just not stand up here and hit and hit and hit and hit. You know, I talked about having some form of a routine and I've got to remind myself, hey, slow down. <laughs> There's no rush. Now you see that, how the club head falls out. That's not a bad thing. And I think that is actually a good thing. So now if I went into a full follow through, the club head will fall out naturally, but because I'm trying to get as many reps in as possible, I don't want that happening all the time. is really solid the feeling that I'm having the power that I'm generating because it's more compact swing and you'll notice that I'm not swinging over the top and kind of leaning towards the ball like that and then you know standing back up and potentially chunking it or thinning it I'm just going to follow through, stay connected. train with this seven iron um, I don't know what it is it's just it's the right club for me to train with it gives me confidence if I go up when I'm playing or if I go to a six or five iron I feel comfortable um, if I go to an eight or a nine I feel comfortable so the sevens right in the middle ah, lost my balance there all right, take the club head off, club head cover off, and keep this other trading aid on. I'm just gonna hit a few without it. You'll I'll notice straight away how much more connected and committed I am. Wow, that's cool. So as I go through this, all I'm thinking about is building on what I built on last week. Or the foundation that I built on last week. I just want to keep building on that. I don't want to forget about what I did last week. So that's why I'm keeping this aid. I just wanted to say to someone out there that's trying to figure it out. Maybe you are in a season where you're feeling a little lost. Um, or you feel like you just don't know which way to go. It's on my heart to tell you that if there is something that you know that you should be chasing or that you should be doing and you feel like it's a part of what you're called to do, then don't hold back because you're fearful of what other people are going to think about you. Let me ask you a question. When your time on this earth is over, Will you regret not doing that one thing? And if the answer is yes, this is a message for you to go after that one thing, whatever it is. For me, it's golf and content and speaking to you and trading and entrepreneurship and giving out words of encouragement where I can. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, follow along my journey, and don't forget, golf is hard.